questions on your investments, ask a personal financial specialist at findapfs.com. Although Charles Ponzi was not the first, he certainly was the most prolific of his time. Even Bernie Madoff's most prolific scheme is referred to as a Ponzi scheme. Prior to Ponzi, these schemes were merely called a robbing Peter to pay Paul scheme. The scam started in 1919 when Charles Ponzi formed a company called the SEC, which stood for the Securities Exchange Company. He promised investors a 50% return within 45 days by buying and selling a special postal coupon. Interest rates at the time were 5%. Favorable reports in newspapers helped the SEC garner more investors. The early Ponzi investors doubled and tripled their money. The Ponzi scheme. Love us on radio, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. We are KLAV 1230 AM. You're listening to KLAV Las Vegas. Views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff or management of KLAV. Welcome to Pooch with Style with your host, Julie Lascalo, the crazy guru, and author James Kelly. For the next 30 minutes, we'll be interviewing animal professionals and discussing the wonderful world of animals and highlighting some of the great products available at poochwithstyle.com. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230. Or toll free. Toll free. 1-866-820. K-L-A-V. Now, let's bring on the hosts with style. Here's Julian James. Hello, and welcome to Pooch with Style. I'm your host, Julie Lascano. The topic of today's show is dogs with heat stroke and how to avoid them. But before we get started, I'd like to say hello to my co-host, James Kelly from Aspects of Writing. And hello, Julie. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for being here. Thank you. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Pooch with Style with me, your host, Julie Lascano, right here on KLAV 1230 on the AM dial in Las Vegas. Or on your computer, you can find us live on the Internet at KLAV1230AM.com. Um, James would like to share with our listeners uh, where where can they s see us live? Okay, you can go to YouTube.com and that's YouTube.com forward slash Aspects of Writing and when you get to Aspects of Writing, which is all one word, you click on the Featured button. Our topic today is dogs with heat strokes and how to avoid them. As we go along, if you have any questions, please call us locally at 702. 731-1230, or if you're out of this area code, you can reach us at 1-866-820-5528. Dog heat stroke symptoms. Um, like their human counterparts, dogs can, they, get, they can get too warm and suffer from heat stroke, and this is caused by being in a hot, confined space with little ventilation, such as in a car. And so it's very important that you don't put your canine companions into this kind of a situation. Dogs that are suffering from heat stroke can enter a coma or even die from this condition. So it's essential to recognize uh, the signs. Some of the signs are a swollen tongue, panting. As most people are aware, dogs start to pant when they get hot. They do this to release heat from their body and cool themselves off. A very hot dog. <laughs> hot dog. Okay, that, that's, that's good. A very hot dog will also have a swollen tongue. This allows them to give off even more heat through increased surface area. A panning dog will release even more heat into the air, heating the air quicker than it would otherwise if there is no ventilation. The other sign is a bright red gums or tongue. A, tongue, a dog suffering from heat exhaustion may have a bright red coloring to their gums or tongue, and the gums may also be dry to the touch. Disorientation or confusion is another sign. A dog with too high of an internal temperature may stare or have an anxious expression. It may also appear disoriented and stumble while walking. Another sign of confusion is if a dog doesn't respond to their name or commands when it usually does. I don't know. My dog doesn't doesn't respond to commands. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Mine either. <laughs> Increased heart rate, difficulty breathing. 
Another common sign is increased heart rate and difficulty breathing. If you notice that your dog seems to, too winded or to correlate with the activity it was doing, it may be a symptom of heat stroke. Another sign is vomiting and diarrhea. Uh, that's very common in heat strokes. At, at this point, it's critical to get your dog cooled off and to a vet veterinarian immediately. The other sign is collapse, coma, and death. If a dog's temperature is at too high for too long, it can collapse. At this point, irreversible organ failure may be occurring. And it's crucial to cool your dog off and get to a veterinarian immediately. You may have only minutes to, to act. Um, that's, you know, especially now with the, with the heat. I know yesterday, just yesterday, I was, um, I just felt like Boogie was just a little off, mm -hmm. you know, and I did, uh, I bathed him. I usually bathe him on the weekend, but um, I did bathe him, and I noticed that he was going into the, the bathroom, which is a cooler area, and so he was laying there for a while. Uh, do you do the same thing, James? Uh, yes. You know, also um, bringing up the, the heat situation, I think what we should to do as well is let the listeners know that it's very important that they don't leave their dogs in the car, not even for a couple minutes when it's over 100 degrees outside for sure, um, because a, the temperature of a car can go up so fast. That is so true. I know that. Um, I know that uh, when. Remember when we met not long ago? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, and. We were just, you were actually, we were just going to meet, you were going to hand me a book. Right, right. And But we decided, and it's one of those things that you just don't think about it at the moment. Yeah, and I, it really wasn't all that hot that day. I think it was only in the <laughs> 80s. But what's amazing is how fast the temperature can go up in a vehicle, even when it's in the 80s. Right. Um, you know. Yeah, I did have the sunroof open, but nonetheless, it's one of those things that when I when I was walking back, that it freaked me out for a second because you just, I mean, you get distracted, and and that's what happens. You just all of a sudden you forget your little dogs in there, and I'm like, oh my god! But then I'm like, oh, but I left them in the window. But you're right. And I remember I hot. said, Julie, did you leave? <laughs> Right. But the good news is that you did at least leave the sunroof open, and it was in the 80s. It wasn't like 100 degrees out that day. Yeah, it was getting towards the towards the evening. Right. And um, how about some? We have some fun facts. Ten fun facts about dogs. Um, all dogs can be traced back 40 million years ago to a weasel-like animal called the my what is that? Myasis. Yeah. which dwelled in trees and dens. The myasis later evolved into the, oh great, the Tumarctus. <laughs> you, you wrote these. <laughs> <laughs> A direct forebear of the genius can, uh, Canis. Now, I, I should have selected another one. With, no, that's that's right. less complicated. <laughs> which includes the, the wolf and the jackal as well as the dog. All right, fun fact number two is ancient Egyptians revered their dogs. When a pet dog would die, the owner shaved off their eyebrows, smeared mud in their hair, and mourned aloud for days. Yours was better than mine. Ah, well. <laughs> I'm just awful. Small quantities of grapes and raisins can cause renal failure in dogs. Chocolate, macadamia nuts, cooked onions, or anything with caffeine can also be harmful. Now, here's the thing with the chocolate. Because I'm a, I'm a, I, I probably eat chocolate every day. Okay. But I know that a few years ago, and I just simply didn't know that that dogs, you can, yeah. they can actually die from eating too much chocolate. Too much chocolate. Yeah. And I didn't know that. And I would, I would always say choco choco. That meant that I had chocolate, and so he used to get excited because I, I would always give him some. Yeah, I, I think that's what you know. Probably a few years ago. Well, certainly about 20 years ago, we didn't even know all this. So people were just feeding the dogs anything and everything. Right. <laughs> and for instance, the next fact is that apple and uh, pear seeds contain arsenic, which may be deadly to dogs. Oh, that's even worse. It's good to know what these things. What about for us? It's got arsenic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I'm concerned about that myself. I like this one. Rocky, uh, rock star Ozzy Osbourne saved his wife Sharon's Pomeranian from a coyote by tackling and wrestling the coyote until it released the dog. Wow. 
He's, wow. He seems like a pretty tough guy, though. Well, if it isn't pigeons, you know. <laughs> yeah. Or bats, bats. Or, it was a bat? Yeah, no. yeah. He bit off the head of a bat. Yeah. Uh, dogs have sweat glands in between their paws. Yeah, I did know that. That the only place they actually can and release, you know, sweat is through the paws. Right, and I was just talking to a friend of mine yesterday about this because I didn't know that, and so because I felt that he was kind of off, I I felt his paws, and yeah, they were like kind of sweaty. Wow. Yeah, and he, like I said, he kept going into the bathroom kind of, and to cool off because he was just laying down, but it kind of worried me. Yeah. Um, let's see. In two thousand three, Doctor Roger. Mugford invented the Wagometer, a device that claims to interpret uh, to interpret a dog's exact mood by measuring the wag of its tail. <laughs> oh, well, that's cute. That's interesting. I know Boogie when he gets excited. So, do you have one of those on a pooch with style? <laughs> <laughs> a Wagometer. <laughs> You'll need to get those on there. Yeah. Uh, dogs have three eyelids. Uh, the third lid, called an what is that called? Nictitating membrane or haw. Uh, keeps the eye lubricated and protected. Now that I did not know. Yeah, no, me neither. See, this is. Good and my stuff. dog, you know, as we discussed before, almost had eye surgery, and yeah. I, that never came up. Yeah, and that, we know we we should do a show just about that because that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Well, what happened was is I have a particular breed of dog um, that is called the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, and they're the miniature Spaniel. And that breed, when they're puppies, because their eyes are so big, um, they cannot close their eyelids all the way, so they're always open a little bit. And the problem with that is is that allows bacteria to collect in that area, that, that line, mm -hmm. where the eyelids are open. Um, and if bacteria sets in, it can literally eat a hole in the dog's eye in 24 hours. So when you see the signs of a, of a dog who, who may have a, a extreme swelling or reddening of the eye, it's important to take it to the veterinarian immediately because you don't know what that could be. And as it turned out, that's what I did. And when we took her to the vet, um, he immediately knew it was bacteria, and we took him to a dog ophthalmologist. And I think you met the you know, you went with there. I went with you, and yeah. I'm like, James, I didn't even know, you know there was one. Yeah, and it's real important to, for people to know that there's specialists out there for this because what happened was is they gave me four different medications you had to put in the dog's eye every two hours. And then you go back, you know, the next day, they check the eye again because it, it's still swollen, so you don't know if it's better or not. Mm -hmm. And as it turned out, the dog's eye wasn't, which means even though the medication slowed down the process, the bacteria was still eating away at that eye. Right. So the choice was either remove the eye or do something else. And so I pleaded with the doctor to do something else. Mm -hmm. And what he did is he went in and he took the blood from the dog, spun it, and took the, um, what's the, the white stuff that comes from the blood, Ryan? Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, right. And made a serum out of that. And then what I did is I would have to put that in the eye along with the other medications every two hours and it, it healed the, the eye. It was amazing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's good to know because uh, I didn't even know that the there was a dog ophthalmologist. So you know now. There you go. <laughs> You're listening to Pooch with Style with me, your host, Julie Lascano, and my co host James Kelly, right here on K L A V here in Las Vegas, the beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. There we go. Um, a dog's shoulder blades are unattached to the rest of the skeleton to allow greater flexibility for running. Now, see, I didn't know that either. See, me neither. Yeah. Puppies are sometimes rejected by their mother if they are born by cesarean and cleaned up before giving them back to her. I never even heard of a dog's cesarean. I didn't know they did that. Yeah, me neither. So <laughs> Boy. You've got all kinds of good facts here, Julie. Yeah. Julia. Dog safety tips. What are the signs that a dog is going to bite? One of the best ways to prevent a dog attack is to know the difference between a dog that is relaxed and calm and a dog that is showing signs of aggression. A dog's body language is the key to understanding when it may be preparing to bite. Here are some common signs that a dog is relaxed and not planning to bite. A relaxed dog will hold its head up. The dog's tail will either be resting, pointing down, or gently wagging back and forth. The ears should be neither back nor forward. The dog's hair will lay smooth along its back. Its mouth and lips are relaxed, almost appearing as if the dog is smiling. You can see the dog's 
tongue. You know, I, Julie, I think we have a caller on the line. Who's our caller? Hello, caller, are you there? Yes, I am. <laughs> Hi, Julie and James. <laughs> Hi, Judy. Hi, Judy. How are you? I'm doing fine, and James, you didn't have to text me this time. <laughs> I'm, I'm just the, I'm out here in Ohio, and I'm just all busy and mixed up with the time. But I just wanted to call and say hi. And Julie, I meant to tell you last time, your website, Pooch with Style. There are a lot of links on there, but I want the listeners to know that there is a link uh, for dog toys, and they are really unique. Thank and you so also, much. also uh, a link to owner gifts. And there are many, many times when I have my my friends that I know that are dog lovers, and I want to buy them something. You know, that's a, a, a frame with a, a pooch on it or something. Right. And they're hard to find. So on your website, you've just got a whole link to them. So thank you so yeah. much. And and we'll we'll be adding more. And also, if if there's ever um, a dog toy or any kind of product that you don't see on our on our site that you'd like to to share with us, let us know. We don't have a problem um, adding it on. But well, I don't. You. I don't think there's much that you, that you don't have. <laughs> we should let our listeners know that this is Judy McFadden, who's a friend. Right. Uh, Judy's been on my show a few times for aspects of writing, and she was on your first show. Right. Yeah. And Judy wrote a book called Life with McDuff, um, a therapy dog. And uh, how's that going, uh, Judy? Well, I, I think I told you that I did a story for Chicken Soup for the Soul, mm -hmm. and it was accepted, and it will be published in their book release September the 18th. Chicken Soup for the Soul, I can't believe my dog did that. Congratulations. And yeah, also... And I, and I'm sorry, I, want, I wanted to tell you, I saw Dawn's Jack. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, Jack was I here. I saw Jack. There's yeah. a great picture of Jack with his little poodle cut on. So <laughs> yeah, that was that. Tito's handiwork, putting that on there. Oh, yeah. Well, you <laughs> tell him he's so good. You know that. He can do anything. <laughs> well, so anyway, I'm not going to take your time, but I just wanted to, to say hi to everybody. Well, and Julie, thank you for having me on the show. And James, you're my mentor. So. <laughs> well, I wanted to say, I, and this is the truth, I swear to you, I've not spoken to you in probably a week and a half, two weeks. Right. And I told Julie, you know what? I have a feeling Judy's going to call. <laughs> and she's, before we went on air, and she said, you think? I said, I don't know. I just have this sensation that she's going to call today. <laughs> and lo and behold. And there you are. You. Well, they say, up pop the devil in a pink night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for calling, Judy. I appreciate right, your call. You guys Bye, take Judy. Bye-bye. Okay, hold on, hold on, everybody. We have breaking pooch news. <laughs> All right, this is James Kelly here with Pooch News. <laughs> I like our new sound effects. Uh, and and the, the topic of today's um, Pooch News is Chihuahua Hoarders. Um, we're doing the best they could. They just got out of hand. Uh, the scene was shocking. 185 Chihuahuas were being kept at a home in northeastern Pennsylvania. The corpse of 30 more were packed in a freezer. Acting on multiple tips, state dog wardens and state troopers executed a search warrant last night, removed the animals, transported them to temporary quarters at the Pennsylvania Farm Show Complex in Harrisburg. Um, the Department of Agri Agriculture, which enforces the state dog law, had not filed charges against the owners. Uh, identity identified as Thomas and Albert Ambrosa of Benton um, as of Friday morning. State police also had nothing to report. Um, for some reason. The state law requires anyone who keeps, keeps transfers or borders more than 25 dogs to obtain a current, uh, they have to have a, a kennel license and it has to be inspected annually. Dogs are also required to have dog licenses and rabies vaccinations. Thomas Ambrosa did not, did not immediately return a phone call uh, message uh, Friday at his home, which is also listed as Albert Ambrosa's residence. It was unclear whether they are related. Veterinarians who checked the Chihuahuas, plus a coon dog and a mixed breed that were also removed from the residence, found no serious health issues, only minor eye, teeth, and skin problems. The dogs uh, wagged their tails when visitors approached their crates and apparently came from a loving home, officers said. Um, the owners were telling us their names as they were tagging them, said Nicole 
Bucker, a spokeswoman for the State Department of Agriculture. The dogs in the freezer, which included adult and puppies, um, apparently died of natural causes, and the owner said they planned to cremate them. Uh, they weren't killed, she said. So that's kind of good news there. Yeah. Um, Bucker said conditions at the home were not as bad as one would think. The owners were doing the best they could in circumstances they were in. It just got out of hand, she said. By this morning, animal shelters had agreed to take in about half the dogs. Bucker said she hoped to place the rest by the end of the day. I think they're ready to find their forever home, she said. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the comments about that story, and maybe okay. you know we'll have a little bit here um, because I have a comment or two on my, my own. Uh, there wasn't um, some. This was something that was just out of hand. This is what one comment is about. It's a behavior disorder that needs medical treatment, or these people will do this again. Meaning that the owners had need medical treatment. Mm -hmm. It sounds like the dogs came through the ordeal relatively unscathed. Uh, thanks to all involved, from those that rescued the dogs to, to the organizations now caring for them and finding them homes. A happy ending is a wonderful thing, especially after the events in another part of the country this week. Now, and, and this kind of reminds me of Foopy, you know, that people need right. to put into consideration uh, that there are organizations out there, one of them being Foopy.org, um, which for, stands for Foreclosed Upon Pets. And we actually, um, anybody that buys our products online at poochwithstyle.com gets a discount of 15, I think it's 15%. All you have to do is use the coupon code, which is Foopy. And he's also on our website. But it, it, yeah, I think people need to know that, you know? And to explain a little bit about what Foopy is, it, it's very relative to this story in a sense. Well, not really because it's like a kennel. But well. Foopy is where people leave their animals behind because they've been foreclosed upon and either they can't afford to take their dogs with them or their cats or whatever animals and, or wherever they're moving to doesn't allow pets. So they just literally leave the animals in the house. Mm -hmm. And those houses can be shut up for days on end before someone discovers they're even in there. Right. Which That's is very true. sad. In this case, it sounds like they were just running an illegal kennel, really. Um, and I think all that really happened here is that it sounded like they were trying to care for the animals. It's just there were so many, they just couldn't. Yeah, and like they say, it just got out of hand. Yeah. Yeah. There's another comment here. Uh, is it a comment? Let's see. The situation got out of hand. Oh, and, and, and there just you have it. Just what you just said. <laughs> really? <laughs> that's, what, that's nothing but an excuse and a bad one at that. I agree with MMF 1124. Oh, that's the, the call sign for mm -hmm. that. Okay. Yeah. The Harrisburg Humane Society are eating this up. Please do not give them any money before you open up that wallet. Remember this, the executive director of the Harrisburg Humane Society makes 87000 Oh wait, how much? 87950 yeah. a year. That's a huge amount of money for doing absolutely nothing. Instead, <laughs> please donate items the animals can use and please consider adopting from them, get the animals out of the hell hole. Wow, 185 chihuahuas. That beats the old record of 181 Dalmatians. <laughs> um, let me stop here. You're listening to Pooch with Style, your host, Julie Lascano, and my co host, James Kelly, right here on KLAV 1230 on the AM dial or KLAV 1230AM.com on your computer. We also stream live on Google, plus YouTube, WordPress, and Facebook, and they can also see us. You can view us live on youtube.com forward slash aspects of writing, and that's aspects of writing all one word and when you get there just click on the feature button and you can see us in studio. More on dog uh, heat stroke. Um, how to treat an overheated dog. Dogs cannot tolerate uh, too much heat as we know. Their fur which covers their entire bodies prevents them from sweating. The largest surface not covered with fur is their paw pads which explains the damp paw prints you might find on the sidewalk on hot summer days. Because your dog sweats so little, it's important that you know the signs of heat exhaustion and heat stroke and how to treat them if they occur. Knowing what to do when your dog gets hot and taking immediate action can save its life. An overheated dog is a medical uh, emergency. Um, things that you'll need, you'll need water, face cloth or towel, rectal thermometer, and the instructions, number one on our list, remove your dog from the heat immediately upon suspicion of heat exhaustion or stroke. Put him or her in the shade in an air-conditioned car or inside an air-conditioned house. 
Um, use a cool, wet cloth to moisten your dog's face and paw pads. Doing so will allow evaporation to occur and the heat to dissipate. Offer your dog cool water to drink and immerse your dog in cool water, thoroughly wetting his coat as soon as it is possible to do so. Use a well-lubricated rectal thermometer to check your dog's temperature every five minutes. Your dog can be moved safely when the thermometer indicates a temperature of 103 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Allow your dog to shake off excess water, then allow his coat to dry naturally. Bring him to the veterinarian for further treatment, even if you think you've addressed the problem. Complications from being in extreme heat includes brain damage. Now, those are the things you can do before you even see a vet, you know, to immediately help remedy that situation. Right. And um, especially, again, you know, going back to uh, what we were talking about, the, the heat, we just need to be more aware of what uh, the heat does to the dogs. I mean, just ourselves. Right. You know? So, yeah, that's something to, to really put, a, put attention to. Um, now, last week... Our pooch product of the month. Last week I announced our product of the month and I stumbled quite a bit. Actually, throughout the show I stumbled, right? Because <laughs> that was like terrible. I, I, am, I don't have glasses and I am literally blind. I cannot see one thing. I kept looking, and you forgot them last week. And I forgot them last week. Yeah. And I kept looking back at you kind of like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like help. <laughs> and um, so in keeping with dog safety, we have one of many safety dog products to keep uh, our little pooches safe. We have our auto zip line uh, with TrueFit Smart Harness and Wander Leash, the safest and easiest way to travel with Fido. The Kurgo Auto Zip Line is the easiest and convenient safety harness and restraint system for your dog. A nylon web line simply attaches between the two rear seat belts or rear passenger side handles, creating a tether run. And this secure line allows the dog freedom to roam in the back seat of the car and allows the driver to focus on the road ahead, thus reducing the driver distraction. The Kurgo dog harness and the leash integrate with the zip line, allowing you to quickly, quickly transition from walking the dog to getting on the, on the road. And the benefits basically is the, the function as a great walk, they, uh, they function as a great walking harness. It works with all vehicle seat belts and it's convenient to get the dog in and out of the car. The dog cannot jump out of the car when the door is open. And we have, de um, what is it? We have a couple different colors. Well, actually. let's also explain exactly how that works. There's a line that goes from the handles. When you're in the back seat, most cars now have handles up above. Right. Or they'll have a place for even um, to hang clothes. Yeah. And it attaches there from one side of the door on one side of the car to the other side on, on, the, on the roof area. Right. And then on the bottom part, the dog has a harness that's attached to that zip line. Mm -hmm. And then there's a harness that's attached to the bottom seat. That's um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you can find that at poochwithstyle.com. Next week, uh, we will return with a live show. And the topic will be dogs and healthy eating. You can find links and information about all my guests on the Pooch With Style website, poochwithstyle.com. Every Sunday, Pooch with Style will, be, will broadcast live at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time here on KLAV and on the Internet at www.klav1230am.com. Keep in mind, we rebroadcast on VegasAllNetRadio.com at 5 Pacific Standard Time. You can also view us on video here in the studio at KLAV on YouTube immediately after the broadcast. Just go to YouTube and enter Aspects of Writing with James Kelly. For more information on dog tips, dog safety, and dog products, you can go to your computer and log on to poochwithstyle.com. This is David DeHaan, the host of Community